day four, going to the first session. It's about to be a great day, a beautiful day. But have fun, I gotta learn a lot. Y'all already know what to do. Y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all stay tuned for the video. Love y'all, peace. <laughs> it's JoJo's world. I'm just living in it. I flex on you haters. Oh. Hi, haters. Yeah. This is my world, so it's all in my favor. Yeah. I like all girls, yeah. But I just want to encourage you, as you think about your life now and then after college, you need a local church with older brothers and sisters who are pouring the gospel into you with younger brothers and sisters you're pouring the gospel into. You need a local church, and there's a local church that needs you. You have gifts from the Holy Spirit that are designed to build up a body of Christ. So here's the deal. If we are disciple makers of the nations, which Jesus has made clear, that's who we are. This is who you are as a follower of Jesus, who I am as a follower of Jesus. Well, then let's pray like it. What I'm encouraging you to do is seriously like don't just okay maybe but like really dive in god what would this look like for me prayerfully god are you leading me to do this and i'm going to explore every option where this might be the case seriously and prayerfully consider short-term or mid-term missions before you move on to your next step now i want you to i want you to think on two different levels uh so as your vocation or through your vocation. So here but yeah, the biggest takeaway was really the showing. It was really about that I need to be in, I need to embrace the uncomfortable when I'm, I'm Christian. I need to go to the places that don't really know Jesus, but are yearning and longing to know Jesus though. Um, and trying to be in the comfortable trying to be in the comfortable is really just gonna make me stagnant as a christian and not gonna progress me as a christian you know what i'm saying because jesus didn't really just hang out with the people that are already healed he hung out with the people that needed to be healed and i think i've been called to that recently especially in the transfer portal going to a different school um i think i'm being called to go somewhere that people are yearning and longing for a relationship with God, but they just don't have nobody there that can help them with that. So I think in, that's the biggest conviction I got out of today's session or this morning's session. So yeah, but it's lunchtime. We better go grab something to eat. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace. Huh? What was your takeaway From of the what? session? What session? The one we just had. Oh, there? Which the one? Main one? The main one. Oh, I don't know. I want this one. The takeaway I got from this session was basically consider going elsewhere so you can like spread the gospel and uh, don't just completely just say no to it. Just always consider it because I mean you can help somebody else grow in their life and spiritual life with God. So. I was fundraising for my ransom uh, ministry, trying to raise eight thousand. So if you plan on giving a ransom, you want to give a ransom. You got a Venmo and a Cash App. Want to do a check? We got the check. Ransom you. Cash out. Ben Venmo. What boy you want to be in? Big boy? Any of them that got food. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes. Chick fil A probably go crazy, though. Go crazy. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Hey, boy! I hope. Man, better just ran a red light, man. Bro, is that green? <laughs> hey, it was good. He got the green arrow. He got the green arrow. Question, question for the vlog, man. What are the ships y'all need to burn in order to get closer with God? Ships can be anything dealing with relationships, lust, control, um, things to that nature. Um, but yeah, what, what ships do y'all need to burn in y'all lives in order to get closer to God or be all in with God? Um, y'all leave those in the comments. Yeah, I'll give you guys one second. You're fine, you're fine. 8.7 out of 10. I'm beyond 10 out of 10. Just got done eating. 
head out to the men's breakout session. What's it called? Men talk. Mm -hmm. So if I get this good word, <clears throat> y'all see it all in a little bit. Think about it like this. You see, content don't sleep. Jojo is tired, but still bringing y'all content, man. If that ain't enough reason to like, comment, subscribe. You heard the man. Like, comment, and subscribe right now. Did everybody get a sheet when you came in? Okay, hopefully you got a sheet, and hopefully you got something to write with. On that sheet, or any identifying marker on that sheet, then cross that out right now. So this sheet is intended to be anonymous, and we're gonna do something with it. I mean, it's the reality of like, how, how the Bible describes men and how society describes them, just how, how just untrue the societal norm of men is. How God wants us to be in true community and vulnerability with other Christian men around us is just straight up the opposite of how society wants us. Crazy. The like, oh how easy we are to be pleased. Like we think it's a burden to follow Christ and all this stuff and it was just like, oh it's so much joy. And like, I just feel like an idiot. Like, to pleasure myself or to use women for pleasure or whatever it is, like, just how, I mean, how stupid it is, like, to, to discount that God somehow is not as joyful, and, like, everything that I do in this earth will not be good enough, so, I don't know, that was just really hit me in the face, dude. Like, oh. Got finished with the other breakout session. What did we go to? Experiencing, what was it? Not experiencing. Is freedom it? from uh, yeah, sexual sin. Yeah, experiencing freedom from sexual sin. That's a big one in my life, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I gotta the sin of females, the love of females and me being around them twenty four seven has gotten a hold on me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I love being around women, I love being around females, regardless if we do anything sexual or not. I just love being around them. And I think that's just a big ship that I need to burn. Like I said, and mentioned earlier, something I need to cut off from my life for a period of time because I think I'm still immature in my faith when it comes to that and on how to control myself in certain situations when I'm with females. So going to that talk was really helpful on how to have practical ways on how to avoid certain situations. And if I am in that situation on how not to act, really confessing my sins if I do do it, Confessing leads to connection and fellowship and forgiveness with others and with God. So, really, really good talk we had. Last session of the night, had a little athlete's dinner. <clears throat> Got done with that. But it's the last session right now. Better do the movies too. I bet 10 and a half done before we get into that. I was going to bet something. right now. Three days later. Oh, 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 that's A B right there, you know. Hey guys, yeah. <laughs> I'm so rude of you. Hey, you can still rude of you. He's trying to. I'm oh, fine. Wow. He can. He can. He can. How fast? Uh, He's almost done minutes. now. Under two minutes, but I ain't saw him under two minutes in over an hour. Done. Can I do it? I hate pork. So slight. So it's like, oh, 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 hey guy, oh. You gotta mix it up first. Oh, oh, oh now she tough. The way she moving it, but I know she tough. I know she tough the way she moving it. Oh, hold on, let me, let me time, let me time you. Let me time. time? Yeah, because hey, the way you moving again. it, the way you moving it. Okay, it's not crazy, guys, it's not crazy. No, the way you moving it, I know you, I, I know you serious. Ready? I like nervous too a lot. Ready? Go. Uh, the way she moving it. Can you multitask while you're doing it? Or you uh, yeah, you like a it? little bit. Um, no, I'll let you like it. I'm like, we're lazy because that's on you. 36 in, 36 in, and she already got one side done. She's going to solve it in under two minutes. Mm -hmm. I ain't got the mental capacity. Because you tell yourself that, sir. See, there's power of life and death in the tongue. If you keep telling yourself that, you'll never have capacity. 
perfect capacity. I just don't feel like doing it, okay? I just don't feel like doing it. Don't feel like learning. Hey, that's it right now. You just don't feel like doing it. So many children. Yeah, she's gonna be done before 145. Mm. What was that, 135? Yeah. Wait, Slightly. seriously? No, you're lying. He was timing it. Seriously? Period. 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 Still got it. Actually, press it down there. Huh? Is this your, your, your PR? No. Yeah. No. Uh, my fastest time is 1 minute and 5 seconds. Mm. Yeah. Still better than you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 This is the way she was moving it. <laughs> see, see, true. <laughs> but yeah, better head to the last session now. All right, better head to the last session now. See y'all. Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Him, what we just read in Revelation chapter 7. That's where all of history is headed. And who's designed it to head in that direction? God has. God has designed all of history to culminate in His name being glorified by people from all the nations. Now... You might say at this point, wait a minute. That sounds pretty self-centered of God. That God's ultimate goal is his own glory being enjoyed and exalted among all the nations. That sounds self-centered. Are you saying, David, that God is self-centered? That God is centered around God? And I want to be clear. That's not what I'm saying. That's what the Bible is saying. And Christ's mission is redeeming people from all nations. If I'm gonna follow him in that direction, this is the direction he's going, what does that mean for me in my life? So we really do, like we've been doing, wanna give y'all some time for one thought. Just write down, I think, it could be anything. It could be something that, man, I need to start praying this. I need to be more open-handed because I think God is putting this on my heart when it comes to reaching the nations, but... Yo, wrapping up day four. The session was really good. Uh, David Platt was basically just talking about that uh, being a Christian, we're all meant to enjoy and to exalt Jesus Christ and God and to proclaim the gospel to the places that really need it. <clears throat> And he was showing us maps and how Paul was going around and just preaching the gospel to the places that didn't know the gospel, didn't know at all. And he was just making disciples and his disciples were making more disciples. And that was just teaching us that we really have a lot of impact as Christians in our society today. And we just can't be comfortable in the situation we are in right now. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's cool and all, but God wants us to embrace the uncomfortable. And the uncomfortable... Even when you're working out, you know what I'm saying? Only time you're going to grow a muscle is if you push it off a little bit harder than you did the time before. And that's just as being a Christian too. You mean you're not gonna grow or you're not gonna you're not gonna grow or do more if you're still being stagnant and just doing the same old things, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get out your comfort zone and don't say you're underqualified or you can't talk or you don't or you're not well versed in the scriptures or anything. God just really just wants you to take that one step of faith. And he would do the rest, you know what I'm saying? So that's just being a disciple. That's just being a Christ follower, man. We're not supposed to know our next steps. That's that's why we believe in Jesus Christ and God, because they are supposed to lead our steps, lead our path, and put the light on the next step. And if we knew what we're going to do 10 years from now, we wouldn't even rely on God anymore, you know what I'm saying? We would just think, oh, it's all me. I'm doing this by myself. I got that job. I got the promotion. I got that growth off myself. But in all actuality, you really did it. God's been already written it, planned out. He already wrote it out. He already knew everything. He's pulling the strings. He's the main orchestra, but right? he's, he's main puppeteer and everything, man. But yeah, this whole conference has been amazing, man. And then after the session, all the Sanford people we got in the room just talked about what's been convicting us this whole time at conference and stuff like that. Well, one thing that really stuck out to me that I haven't said yet, because my girl Madeline should be coming out with bars left and right. I don't know how she even came up with this, but it's an acronym called BUSY. And busy means being under Satan's yoke. She used that 
in a phrase. It was like, don't be too busy for God. And you know what I'm saying? That's a, like a, that's just one of the things as a Christian, we always say, oh, we're too busy. I don't have enough time to go, you know, relate to another person or go disciple another person because I, just, I don't have enough time. I'm busy. I'm a college student. I got classes. I got work. I play a sport. You know, I got to hang out with my other friends. I just don't have time to make up to, for God. But that's just really just being under the under Satan's yoke. And when Madeline said that, I was like, dang, bro, you really talking for real. You really going crazy for real. So I had to write that boy down. And I had to relate it back to y'all, man, because it's really true. That's just one of the things that Satan really puts in our mind saying, oh, we're too busy to even give time, God time at least five minutes, but we got time to go to the club, you know what I'm saying? But I think this whole day has been impactful, very convicting in my heart. And I like this whole conference has been reassuring me that God wants me, is leading me to a different path than I think, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a journalism major, I want to do broadcasting and stuff, but I think God's leading me to something more, something greater. But yeah, that was day four. We got one last session tomorrow morning. Y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all stay tuned for the next video, man. I love y'all. Peace.